Okay, so I have to admit that at first, I didn't really understand why I got so many questions about which is better, the iPad mini 6 or the Galaxy Tab S7. But when I looked closer, I realized that there are a lot of similarities, and at the same time, even beyond the size, there are some extremely important differences. I've used both of these tablets for social media, for gaming, for watching videos, browsing the web, and then for things like note-taking and multitasking. And because I love both, this was a challenging comparison. So let's talk about which one is better. Now, when you first put these side by side, the size is the most obvious difference. And there are several implications to this difference. So the iPad mini 6 is designed to be compact and light, while the Tab S7 falls into more of like the medium sized tablet category. So if we're simply looking at portability, the iPad mini 6 is the clear winner. But I do wanna add some context here because even though the iPad mini 6 is smaller and lighter, for the most part, I just have to treat it like any other tablet. So even with its smaller size, I still end up having to put it in a bag. Now, there's no question that it takes up less space and that it's lighter, but I know that most of you haven't had a chance to use these in real life, so I like to add some practical user experience. And from a design standpoint, the two are surprisingly similar. Both are made of machined aluminum, both have a very solid feel to them, both have squared off edges, rounded corners, and small bezels all the way around. Now the ones in the Tab S7 might be slightly smaller, but they look and feel a lot smaller because the device is larger overall. Looking around the edges, we're getting volume up and down controls on the short side of the iPad Mini 6 and on the long side of the Tab S7. Both tablets have USB-C ports for charging and connecting accessories. The iPad iPad mini 6 is 3.1 versus 3.2 on the Tab S7. Now, even though both tablets have four speaker grills, the iPad mini only has two speakers, whereas the Tab S7 actually has four speakers. And I'll talk more about the implications of this later on in this video. One major difference is that the Tab S7 comes with a micro SD card slot, which allows you to expand the maximum internal storage of 512 gigs by up to another one terabyte. Now the iPad mini 6 maxes out at 256 gigs of internal storage, so if storage is an important factor for you, keep that in mind. Moving on, one thing that you're gonna do over and over again is unlock your tablet. So let's talk about biometric authentication. So both tablets have fingerprint sensors integrated into the power buttons. So this way you can power and unlock your tablet at the same time. The Tab S7 also has the option for facial recognition with the front facing camera. So you can choose whichever one is more convenient for you or enable both. When we look at the displays, there's quite a bit to talk about. So let's cover the basics and then go from there. The iPad mini 6 has an 8.3 inch display with a resolution of 2266 by 1488 versus 11 inches and 2560 by 1600 on the Tab S7. So in addition to having a larger display, the Tab S7 is also higher resolution, meaning that you can see more of a web page or a document without needing to scroll and you have more pixels to work with when you have two apps open side by side. When we look at pixel density, we're getting 326 on the iPad mini 6 versus 274. But the iPad mini 6 is a 60 hertz display versus an adaptive 120 hertz display on the Tab S7. This is similar to Apple's ProMotion, which is offered with the iPad Pro models, where the display will change the refresh rate based on the content that's being viewed. If a higher refresh rate offers a better user experience or viewing experience, then it can max out at 120 hertz. But when it's not needed, it can use a lower refresh rate and save on battery life. Now, if you want the refresh rate to stay at a constant 60 hertz on the Tab S7, you also have that option. Now, if you're not familiar with high refresh rate, it makes scrolling and navigating around the UI appear smoother. And it can also be great for games that support higher FPS settings. And we'll talk a lot more about gaming in just a bit. But the iPad mini 6 also has an issue with the jelly effect if you're scrolling vertically in portrait mode. So essentially because of how the screen refreshes at certain scrolling speeds, you can see that straight horizontal lines appear to have a slight angle to them. And if you keep going up and down for some reason, it creates sort of like a rolling shutter effect, which will make sense if you're a camera nerd like me. Personally, I don't think that it's a big deal and it doesn't really impact anything that I do with my iPad mini, but it's definitely there if you look for it. So if you think that it might bother you, go to a store and test one out. Now, one opportunity for improvement with the Tab S7 is that the screen is more reflective than the iPad mini 6. So if you plan on using it outside or in situations where there may be a lot of reflections from bright lights, they may be more noticeable. 
If you're going to be using your tablet for note taking or for drawing, then of course the Tab S7 gives you a larger canvas to work with. And naturally when you're watching video, you're getting a much larger image. Now on top of that, the iPad mini six has a three by two aspect ratio versus 16 by 10 on the Tab S7, which is much closer to the 16 by nine that you get from videos like this one. Ultimately, it means that you're getting really small black bars at the top and the bottom. Personally, if the displays are the same length, which these obviously aren't, this doesn't really matter to me. Like even on devices like the iPad Pro where the black bars are pretty pronounced, it doesn't really bother me. And then I like the fact that I have additional display real estate when I actually need it. Now I talked a little about note taking and art. So this is a good spot to talk about the stylus and keyboard options. So first the Tab S7 comes with a Bluetooth enabled S Pen, whereas the iPad mini six is compatible with the second generation Apple Pencil, which costs an additional 130 bucks. Now, of course, if you don't need a stylus, this doesn't matter to you, but I love the fact that Samsung includes this accessory because I believe that more people will find ways to use it and improve their experience. With the iPad mini, most people are probably not gonna spend 130 bucks just to see if they need it. Now, as far as the actual feel, the second generation Apple Pencil provides more of a firm writing experience where the contact with the display is louder and more pronounced. The S Pen has a softer feel to it, it's quieter, and it almost feels like it gives a little on contact. So I've said this before, but it actually reminds me of writing on a notepad where the pages will compress as you press down. And the Apple Pencil feels like you took a single sheet of paper, put it on a hard surface and then wrote on that. Now one isn't definitively better than the other for every use, so it's gonna come down to your personal preference and your specific use cases. Now as far as storing the stylus, the second generation Apple Pencil charges and is stored on the side of the iPad mini six. With the Tab S7, the S Pen is stored and it's charged on the magnetic strip that's below the camera module on the back. When it comes to keyboard cases, it's a clear win for the Tab S7, but it's not exactly a fair fight. The iPad mini six is intentionally compact, which limits the width of the keyboard case and it makes it very uncomfortable to type on. The Tab S7 has a book cover keyboard, which is plenty big to type on, and it also protects the S Pen when you travel with it. And the back separates from the keyboard, which means that you can take the Tab S7, use it in tablet mode, and still bring the S Pen with you and be able to safely store it. What I do with the iPad mini six is use an external keyboard and then a non Apple case, which includes a clasp that secures the Apple pencil. And if you want to see more about my favorite accessories with the iPad mini six, watch this video. Now I'm going to briefly talk about the camera systems and speakers. Starting with the front facing camera, the iPad mini six has a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera versus eight megapixels on the Tab S7. I'll keep this brief and say that both will work for video calls, but in terms of image quality, the iPad mini six wins. It also has a feature called center stage, which uses the ultra wide camera to track a subject as it moves through the frame and then zooms in and out to give the impression that the camera is following the person. This is a great feature if you're moving around a lot on your video calls. Now, if you're just sitting in front of your tablet, then I'm gonna say that Tab S7 has a better angle because the camera is in the center of the long edge. So just like it is on a laptop. With the iPad mini six, the camera is on the short edge. So when it's horizontal, there's like a weird angle because it seems like you're looking off to the side. When it comes to speakers, the iPad mini six has two speakers versus four on the Tab S7 and the Tab S7 has warmer and more rich audio. For the smaller size, the iPad mini six actually sounds really good, but if I put them head to head, the Tab S7 is better. Now the Tab S7 uses the Snapdragon 865 plus Qualcomm chip, and it comes with six gigs of RAM if you get the 128 gigs of storage, or eight gigs of RAM if you opt for 256 or 512 gigs of storage. The iPad 6 comes with the A15 Bionic, four gigs of RAM, and it's available with 64 or 256 gigs of internal storage. Now I'm gonna quickly give you benchmarks, and then let's talk about multitasking and gaming. So for single core performance, the iPad mini 6 scores 1594, versus 955 on the Tab S7. And for multi-core, we're looking at 4604 versus 3275. Now, if you're considering multitasking, that would be another strength of the Tab S7. So first, the larger display allows for more real estate when you're working in split view. We also have the option of using DeX, which essentially offers a desktop-like user interface. You can attach an external monitor, use an external keyboard and a mouse, and this way have a dual display setup. Now both tablets can also be used as an additional display for a laptop or a desktop. 
Apple calls this feature sidecar and Samsung calls it second display. Now this is a feature that I use all the time when I'm not on my main workstation because I always feel like I'm more productive with additional displays. Now, before I get to gaming, I think it's really important that we look at the available apps and the operating system support. So the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store have a ton of options. So you should be able to find apps to do what you need with both tablets. And that includes photo and video editing. Now, some creative apps like Affinity Photo, Procreate, and LumaFusion are only available for the iPad. So if those are a requirement for you, then the decision is made. Now, another important consideration is operating system support, where Samsung promises three generations of OS updates. Apple, on the other hand, has been excellent at supporting older devices. So iPad OS 15 is still compatible with my iPad Air 2 that I got in 2014. Now, since these are extremely powerful devices, they should have plenty of processing power for years, and this ends up being a major advantage for the iPad mini. Now, in terms of battery life, I actually had really good experience with both. The Tab S7 does probably come out ahead, but I was shocked at how well the iPad Mini 6 compared with the other current iPads. And if you're interested, I'll link to that video in just a moment. Now let's get to gaming, and there are a few different angles here. So first, the iPad Mini 6 could be my favorite iPad to game on. It's just like a perfect size where it's small, light, and comfortable to hold, even after hours of playing PUBG. Now, if you're like some of my friends that prefer to play on a larger tablet, then the Tab S7 is an absolute beast. Both tablets can also run Xbox Game Pass games when paired with an Xbox controller. And in that case, it's a matter of choice. If you want a larger display, since that becomes the primary use of the tablet, that's a Tab S7. If you want a super portable gaming setup, that's the iPad Mini 6. Now let's look at the current pricing and then talk about which one is better. And I'm using the prices off of the Apple and Samsung websites, but you can usually find better prices by using the links in the description. So Apple prices are simple and they very rarely change. The iPad mini 6 starts at 499 for the 64 gig version or 649 for 256 gigs. Then you can add 150 bucks to either of them if you want the 5G version. Samsung's pricing, at least in the US, changes constantly. So currently, the Wi-Fi only version of the Tab S7 starts at 649 for 128 gigs, 729 for 256, and 829 for 512 gigs. Then the 5G versions are an additional $200. Now, when I think about which one of these is better, it comes down to what you value most. The iPad mini 6 is smaller, lighter, and more powerful. It has a better camera system in terms of quality, a more refined app ecosystem with certain exclusive popular creative apps. It has much longer operating system support, and it's amazing to game on handheld if you want a smaller device. The Tab S7 has a larger display with higher resolution, two forms of biometric authentication, it comes with an S Pen, has better keyboard case options because of the larger form factor, it has better speakers, and then it's more powerful for multitasking and as a desktop replacement because of DeX. Now you should watch this iPad battery drain test. Hopefully this video was helpful. Click on my face to subscribe. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.